hello everyone welcome back to my channel psychology network today's topic which would we would be studying is just the part one it is the psychological thought in some major eastern systems now you can find this in your uh, unit one of your ugc net psychology syllabus booklet this is the first syllabus uh, uh, sorry first topic under emergence of psychology now they have divided the eastern system into four parts which is your bhagavad gita buddhism sufism and your integral yoga now this is the part one we would be covering bhagavad gita but with bhagavad gita we would also be covering hinduism philosophy some parts of it because i've seen questions from there as well usually in the books and in a lot of places where i've seen these topics to be covered the problem is they give it in a paragraph they interconnect it with each other a lot of times there is overlapping so people get confused between the terms people get confused what is what and they always leave this chapter they leave this chapter throughout their ug and pg and when the net comes it becomes very difficult for them so what i have done i have come with a simple solution i have uh, divided the slides into certain topics and each topic is on its own we have not tried to overlap is lap it you will understand there are some overlappings uh, but as itself you would understand these to be individual topics on its own and it would be easier for you to understand because it's crisp plus it has all the knowledge which you need now the first slide here which we would be talking about is important texts so these are the texts these are the authors you have to remember the authors for each text for charak samhita it's your maharshi charak for shushrata samhita it's your shushrata for these two it's easy because the author's name it's itself in the text then comes your yoga sutra which is written by patanjali then comes your artha shastra which is written by kautilya kama sutra written by vatsyayana ramayana written by valmiki mahabharata by vyasa and bhagavad gita also by vyasa so if the question comes suppose mcq name two books which is written by vyasa and they are confusing you like they are saying mahabharata and ramayana mahabharata and artha shastra yoga sutra and uh, bhagavad gita and then the fourth option being mahabharata and Bhag- bhagavad gita so it would be the fourth option remember these two written by vyasa this this text on its own uh as a slide then comes the next topic which we would be studying it is the hindu belief system the first is the atma which is the eternal self the spiritual essence of a person in a lot of books you would uh, the books which are written i feel it's from a very whitewashed point of view but the atma they have said it as soul so when the exam comes what is the soul and they they demand an answer from you of course it would be atma but atma essentially is not the soul in a very simplified way we are saying atma means the soul then is your karma karma is the day to day action which you take and it determines how a person would be in the next life if my karma is good in the next life i would be something good in the next life now what is your dharma dharma is the duty an individual is called to live their life by there are some virtues and values which they have to follow and dharma is a lifelong duty it's like kind of a goal of a person and uh, they must do good deeds uh, follow value and virtues and these good deeds would strengthen the karma and it would help the person to reach its dharma the fourth is the moksha moksha means this is the this society the sansar we say and when a person is born the person is born in a society in the sansar and when he dies he is relieved of this society he gets freedom from this eternal life cycle of death sorry life cycle he after death he gets that eternal freedom that is the moksha he is liberated from this uh, material world that is your moksha then we come to the tetriya upanishad it has five shells or panch koshas panch means five koshas means shells or sheets 
what are the five shells a person is made up of anamaya anamaya comprises the physical body pranamaya is the subtle body manomaya is the perceptual body vigyanamaya is the conscious body anandamaya is the transcendental being of a person the highest you must have seen pictures like this sorry i'm not very good artist and then they make this and then again continue making a sheet so the la, uh, the innermost is the trans uh, anandamaya the transcendental body so these are the sheets the shells of a person then comes your guna we say the guna person's characteristic these triguna has been used to describe the personality of a person and the dominance of one guna or the other guna shapes how the person is going to behave so the first guna which we would be talking about is sattva sattva is purity and knowledge they are very calm people the very serene calm and they are seekers of knowledge and very pure as we say then that is rajas and rajas is activity and desire they want something more they want something more so that and they are always move there is movement in them they never calm so this is your rajas tamas they say inertia laziness and darkness of a person uh, personality tamas is not something which is very much desired it is mostly not not working being lazy so this is your tamas so the three triguna are sattva rajas and tamas next we come you see how i've made those slides very compact and in itself and it's not referring to the other slide it's on its own and not too much paragraph so it so you can understand what i'm talking about now comes your patanjali's yoga sutra patanjali's yoga sutra this text uh uses some what do i say techniques to understand the problems of mankind like we talk about observation we talk about interview so these are few techniques like that to understand the problems of mankind um so first which we would be talking about is pratyaksha that is the direct empirical observation you're observing and writing down whatever you have observed from a person's view the second is anumana that is inference you are getting what are you inferring from that observation okay then comes the upamana which is the comparison between maybe there is this observation 1 and there is observation 2 so if if i have to compare that is upamana then comes your sabda the testimony which you give so these are the four ways which are given in the patanjali's yoga sutra then comes your states of consciousness this would be easy for you to understand if you are from uh, if you know hindi a bit so this would be easy for you to understand the first one is jagrata avastha see avastha 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 is the state or being what is the avastha of the person what is the state of a person so jagrat avastha jagna jagrat that is the wakeful state right jagna we know the word jagna from um, jagrat is not from the word jag, jagna but i'm just saying if you have to compare jagrat avastha would be the wakeful state it is the state of normal consciousness like you are listening to this video right now that is your jagrat avastha it's the normal consciousness of a person swapna avastha it is the dream state we swapna means sapna sapna swapna avastha it is the dream state it is a subconscious faculty of the mind it is uh, the impressions of the consciousness are on the subconsciousness of a person then again you see avastha pragyanavastha pragyanavastha is the transcendental state of consciousness it's a consciousness of the divinity 
प्योर प्रज्ञा देन इज योर तुरय अवस्था तुरय अवस्था अगेन इज द हाइस्ट स्टेट ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस दीज आर योर फोर स्टेट्स ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस If you want, you can take the screenshot. You can pause the video and take the screenshot. Then we come to the sadhana. Sadhana is any activity which you engage in to enhance your well-being, be it physical or your mental well-being. So the first is these are the ways for sadhana. The first they are saying shravan. Shravan means to listen. shravan is the stage where they you are hearing from the teacher the guru you hear from the guru and you observe and you whatever the guru is saying usually was considered the truth they and the guru wouldn't wouldn't say anything other than the truth so you are hearing the truth that is your shravan second is manana that is reflecting on what you have observed and heard You, you reflect the teachings of the guru that is observing and understanding whatever you have heard you are reflecting on that then comes your nidhi dhyasana nidhi dhyasana is the trans cognitive realization what you have understood what you have seen you completely assimilate that the all the truths you have seen of the world all the truths which you know you have assimilated that and you are in the trans cognitive realization that is your nidhi dhyasana then comes what is the key challenge to an individual individual it is called jiva what is the key in, uh, problem to an individual incorrect knowledge avidya distorted perceptions even in cbt we we talk about distorted per, uh, perceptions from the distorted perceptions of the world of the self only the person might have depressive thoughts so here what is saying the key challenge which arises for an individual the jiva is the incorrect knowledge the incorrect knowledge the avidya can be dealt by adopting the paths of knowledge if you get the right knowledge that is your gyan then you can remove the incorrect knowledge the second is devotion the bhakti which you show that is your devotion and the work the karma which you do that by the work of karma you can remove those distorted perceptions of yourself the empirical knowledge is called paravidya and the transcendental knowledge is called aparavidya this is all which you had in the bhagavad and the hindu philosophy a uh, very short very crisp but these would help you to revise very quickly uh, before your exam and this would help you to understand and divide what really they are talking about because again as i said they they uh, usually confuse the child so much wherever even if it is a it is a book or some kind of article it confuses a child so i hope this ppt was very clear in its being and it could help you before your exams and watching this just before your exam is a quick revision uh for your ugc net psychology exam thank you so much for listening and keep subscribing and liking the video so i can keep on making free content for everybody